Hello, today we're going to talk about the virtual file system. So we talked about the low level file system, which is actually how are blocks put together and how are they accounted for inside of the file system itself. Now what we're gonna talk about is something a little bit different called the virtual file system. And this is one way where we can actually link multiple file systems together. So this is the abstraction layer where we open a file, close a file, read a file, write a file. Now each file system, the low level file system like Minix, EXT, BT, Btree file system, things like that, are all different on how they allocate blocks, how they write files, how they read files, that sort of stuff. And so a virtual file system treats all of them like they're the same. And the way we do this is the virtual file system is just function pointers. And so if we want to open a file, depending on where we're located, it would point to the function pointer of the Btree file system or the ext file system or the minix3 file system. And that's just an easy way to abstract away. So if you've ever done any kind of inheritance or polymorphism in C++, that's essentially what we're doing. We have this big superclass called file system, and then we inherit it with minix3, ext, that sort of stuff, so that all of them implement the interface called the virtual file system. And so the need for the virtual file system is most operating systems support more than one file system, even Windows does. You have NTFS, you have XFAT, you have file allocation table, things like that. And so there has to be a way where we can join all of these different file systems together and so that they work all together, essentially. And so in that sort of thing, you can have a FAT32 on, say, a USB drive. You can have a Linux drive, that sort of stuff. On Linux, you have many, many more file systems that you can support. EXT4, EXT3. I think on the Hydra machines, they use XFS. There's Btree file systems, all these different file systems. And what it looks like is whenever you go to your Hydra machine, your home folder is actually replicated through all different things. Now, the way it's replicated it uses what's called NTFS, network file system. I'm sorry, not NTFS, NFS, network file system. And what this does, is the virtual file system, whenever you open a file, it will actually use the network to go out, find the file, and open it. And so that way there, no matter what Hydra machine you're on, you have your same home folder. Now for you, it looks the same. Whenever you open a file, it just opens a file just like normally. Whenever you write a file, it writes a file normally. Well, what's performing that operation is the virtual file system. You, as the user, don't have to care whether it's NFS, whether it's NTFS, whether it's Btree file system, whether it's XFS, you don't care about the underlying file system. You only care that whenever you open a file, it actually opens it. And so that's what we're talking about when we talk about virtual file system. So there's this term called mount. Now what happens is in our directory tree, so let's take a look at a directory tree real quick so that we understand what we're actually talking about here. So a directory tree is essentially one way where we can say, well, we have a root, now in Minix, this is inode number one, so this is your root. And that's essentially, it looks like a forward slash in Linux, or in something like Windows, it'd be C, something like C colon backslash or something like that. So that's your root. Now inside the root, if you did an LS, you'd see a whole bunch of different files, like you'd have your user, you'd have home directory, and that's the one we're really talking about here. ETC, and you'd have all these different types of what are called inodes inside of here. So whenever we go into this, this is why we call a tree, is because it always looks so, in mind we have SMARS1, you have JPlank, and so on and so forth. So inside of it, that's why we call it a directory tree, because it looks just like a tree. We have nodes inside of there. Now notice it's not a binary tree, we don't just have a left and a right we have multiple nodes that fit under our hierarchical system. So if I want to get to SMARS1, we actually have to go through root to home to SMARS1. And so this is the important thing whenever we mount a file system. And so if we look at our root right now, we just have user, home, et cetera, and then a root. So this is actually just named root, it's not the root node. And that's for the root user. So if we wanna mount something, there's actually a folder called MNT, but we can, put it in any directory that we want. And so whenever we mount, what we're doing is we're saying, okay, after this, I want the virtual file system to handle stuff differently. So for example, I can mount a Btree file system here, I can mount an ext2 file system, and then we hook up the VFS to whatever file system is going to mount in here. 
I'm almost drawing a little man. There we go. <laughs> so that's essentially what is happening. Whenever we mount, it's called mounting a volume, usually in Windows they use the term volume, or mounting a directory in Linux, something like that, mounting a file system. So whenever we mount it, we're just attaching to the directory tree another file system. So let's take a look at what we need to cover today. We're going to talk about the virtual file system, what we just did, just to introduce what we're talking about. The term mount and what it means to attach another file system to the directory tree. Essentially what it means is whenever we go to a folder, we're actually into, we can be into a completely different file system. And it all looks like one big file system to us. And that's a good thing. Understand how the kernel can be told about a new file system. Understand how blocks can be allocated in different systems and so on and so forth. So, after these, these last three learning objectives really don't have much to do about the virtual file system. It's just there's different ways that a file system can be put together. And so in the virtual file system, essentially what we're talking about is, okay, how do we make the user agnostic whatever the file system is behind the scene? And that's what we do. So how do we actually make the virtual file system understand that there's more than one file system in there? Well, we mount different directories or different file systems on there. And finally, we could tell the kernel by actually writing a kernel module that says this is how the Minix 3 file system works. This is how the ext2 file system works. And if we scroll down here, there's actually this function in the Linux kernel called register underscore file system. And essentially what you're doing is it's a structure of all these function pointers. So if I scroll up here into here, you can see we have this mount function pointer right here. And that will essentially show you how to mount the file system. And so it's not that big of a deal on how it works. Just function pointers. If you want to open something, you call the open of the Minix 3 file system or whatever file system is attached. Now that does mean that whenever we mount something, we have to know the type of the file system. Now Linux will try to auto determine that, but we still need to know so that whenever the kernel traverses the directory tree, whenever we get to that point in the directory tree, we know exactly what virtual file system we need to look at. So yes, we have one virtual file system. However, it can be split up into multiple virtual file systems depending on what directory we actually enter. So that's essentially all I'm gonna cover about the virtual file system.